But first, this week, a sitting senator was banned from a Melbourne strip club for hurling racial abuse at people and talking about their genitals in an expletive-ridden rant. You know what I say? You know what I say yeah. to you? Yeah. You know what I say to you? Yeah. And you? You're a racist penis. Penis. Oh, you are a racist penis. Penis. Oh, you. Seven News broke the story and well done to them. It further exposed how a person preaching morality and justice as the cornerstone of her political image is a very flawed human being. And even if you disagree with me on that point, surely there is one thing we can agree on. It was news, but not at The Guardian or the ABC. Now, The Guardian Australia, I understand, because they are just a political propaganda network at this stage, set up with the support of Malcolm Turnbull. So why would they cover a story of a radical left-wing senator getting into strife? But the ABC, your national broadcaster, which is always preaching about how trusted it is, about how independent it is, well, that is just crazy. If a Liberal senator was involved in a drunken altercation at a strip club, do you think they would have ignored it? Earlier in the week, when we noticed the ABC's flagship news website had not covered the story, we sent them questions asking why they didn't cover the story, and in true ABC form, they just ignored the email. But then this happened on Wednesday. I hope that Lydia gets um, some support. Um, I think that that level of behaviour is quite clearly unacceptable. And I think there are obvious issues uh, that need to be dealt with. Now, at this point, it was several days after the story first broke. And by that afternoon, the ABC was dragged kicking and screaming to the issue, as it couldn't really ignore a stoush that had now embroiled the Prime Minister. Anthony Albanese criticises Lydia Thorpe's early morning expletive-laden altercation outside a Melbourne strip club. Well, if you were a die-hard ABC fan, you would be scratching your head. It would have been the first time that you heard of this story at 5.30pm on a Wednesday afternoon, even though Seven News broke it that previous weekend. By our count, the ABC wrote 27 stories on Lydia Thorpe since the start of the year, canvassing her views on The Voice and promoting her as a prominent representative of a marginalised community. But after the strip club saga, it's almost as if she doesn't exist. There have been just two articles on it, and one of them is a defence of Lydia by a political reporter named Jake Evans. Lydia Thorpe says Prime Minister is trying to silence her after strip club altercation. Anthony Albanese doesn't need to silence Thorpe. The left-wing media will handle that all on their own. Now let's bring in tonight's panel, and I'm pleased to say I'm joined by media writer for The Australian, Sophie Ellsworth, and PR Council's Christy McSweeney. Well, Sophie, why don't we start with you? What have you made of the coverage, and particularly the decision by the ABC to, to admit any stories in the early days? Well, Jack, this was a big story. There's no doubt about that. Lydia Thorpe is well-known in Australia. She's particularly well-known in Victoria. Uh, and she, some of her antics out the front of that strip club were nothing short of disgraceful. So you think that this would dominate headlines all across media outlets uh, across the country? Well, no, as you pointed out, not at the ABC. And I question... Why is the ABC running such a protection racket for Lydia Thorpe? I could only find two articles relating to this incident, uh, one that you pointed out, and also comments that the uh, Prime Minister made about Lydia Thorpe as well. So why didn't they run this story when it initially happened? Well, I would argue that there's, uh, you know, people within the ABC going, look, let's not air this story. It doesn't really fit in with our agenda. Uh, so let's try and bury it. And they've got a charter to uphold to. They should not be taking sides. This was an important news story, but you couldn't uh, find it anywhere on the ABC News website or on their TV programs. Yeah, it's, it's really perplexing. Christy, the only thing that I could think of is maybe they were worried about the mental health implications, but surely there is a way of doing that story in a responsible manner that, that doesn't uh, offend anybody and, and doesn't, you know, raise any of those insinuations. 
Certainly. Look, I've been working in politics 25 years, Jack. It's a long, long time. And over the course of that time, I've seen the justification for the intervention on reporting uh, of people's personal lives, of our politicians and even staffers, uh, as upholding the public interest. That is the justification for journalists delving more and more into people's personal life because it's in the public interest. How the ABC doesn't view this as in the public interest to be a story when they are very quick uh, to report on other personal life matters, other issues relating to our politicians that aren't necessarily connected to their job as elected representatives. And, of course... Lydia Thorpe is paid by the Australian taxpayer, as is the ABC. Yeah, it's a really good point. I mean, Sophie, one story that jumps to my mind is they published nude photographs with a slight blur of Heston Russell uh, when he was uh, running as a politician. They do venture into that more tabloid journalism, and it's... To me, this really looks like a case of bias by omission. And I think people are smarter nowadays. People have figured out some of the tricks, and they don't really seem to be getting away with it. Well, Jack, let's just imagine for a moment if this was a coalition MP, uh, a white male conservative coalition MP, this would have been news headlines on ABC, on every channel, talk back. Uh, it would have dominated radio, TV programs, but it doesn't quite fit their agenda. And this is the problem with the ABC. They have an agenda. They shouldn't have an agenda. Uh, and this won't change. The coalition government was nine years in power, did nothing about it. And now with Labor at the helm, nothing is likely to change because no one upholds them on remaining impartial. And unfortunately, we will continue to see more and more of this.